G'day guys, so today we're going to be talking about the five mistakes that amateur Melodyne users make. Hey, my name is Steve Cullen for the secrets to music success.com and today we're going to be talking about the five mistakes that amateur Melodyne users make. <laughs> So uh, let's dive straight in. And um, if, if you know me, I've uh, done over a hundred, hundreds, like maybe three, four hundred songs that I've used Melodyne on, probably even more. And and I've been doing this for over 10 years and just, and Melodyne's my go-to um, a vocal, vocal tuning software. I use Waves Tune a little bit when I'm like, if I'm in a, if, if I want to just like put something on, uh, especially when I'm like maybe songwriting or, you know, I just put something, it just lock it into the key and so it's no mistake so you're kind of like using and i use that live more like meaning when i'm actually recording or writing the songs and kind of putting the parts down i use that but i don't use that um when i'm actually done the good vocals and i record my um and and i'm tuning up my my i use melodyne because melodyne um i used to use auto tune years and years ago and it wasn't it wasn't that good and now they've got a lot of good features that uh that um that you know people recommend but i um i've been on melodyne for a while now so it's like um i highly recommend Mel melodyne you know if you're going to do melodyne is the most natural kind of sounding it's the most uh smoothest most um uh it's it just makes it more sound a lot more natural and and a lot of the music i do i want i want that element i want a more of a natural sound where it sounds like <laughs> i nailed it <laughs> i got it in first take uh or you're a singer who's got it in first take you know and so uh, you want that kind of, you want that. And so, and then of course, if you want to make it real square or really auto-tuned, like really kind of, when I say square, it's like one note, next note, you know, instead of having, uh, you know, a little slide in between where it's more natural, um, you know, so you might be like more, more towards that kind of square sound if you want that. And, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but you know, that's different. It depends on the genre. It really depends on the genre, you know, what, uh, what kind of how hard you want that tuning so so let's dive right in so um number one the first mistake that uh, a lot of amateurs make is they listen to the melodyne or the the vocals in solo so what that means is uh they're they've muted everything else or they've just soloed just the vocal take that they've they're using and uh and that's all they're using and that's all they're listening to and they're not listening to the song in context um, you've always got to listen to it in context. I'll always tune up my vocals in context with uh, with the song, and I'll go one more one step further. And what I do is um, I put real I put all my processing on it. Um, you know, of course, I will tweak the processing later, but I'll put a bunch of plugins on it, and I'll um, uh, you know I'll put some delays and add some magic, all the reverb, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I'll make it sound really good um, straight away. And just with putting those plugins on it, it already sounds great. And then all I do is go ahead and tune. So I'm listening it, listening to the vocals in context to the whole song. And so this is really, really important because it's it's a fundamental thing that you'll use in mixing, in, um, uh, you know, in producing, in, in so many elements. And even in, you know, in, even in songwriting, you know, you're, you're when you're when you're mixing you know you're you don't listen i never solo an instrument when i'm mixing unless um and and i i do do it but i don't mix everything i the only reason i go to the solo is is i click on it and i'm like okay what's that little crackle or pop okay that's the track or maybe it's like i'm hearing a big frequency i think it's the acoustic guitars maybe it's the mid-range or something it needs it's too much i want to take it out and so then I'll have a look at maybe the acoustic guitar and be like and solo it and be like yeah that's kind of the boomy one uh, let's pull that down a little bit and make it clear or so um, when I do solo you never solo in the mix or anything like that but when you do solo you're finding problems you're finding little uh you know pops and clicks or you know maybe it's a hi-hat and you're like I think it's the hi-hat that's doing that it may and then you check it and, and then you then you have a listen maybe you're soloing a uh, you got stacks and stacks of vocals and you're like, okay, well, you know, is it the second harmony, the third harmony, is it the fifth? <laughs> so you're trying to, you're going to solo for that. But you don't, when you're tuning up your vocals and you're, and you're diving in and you're, and you're actually working on your stuff, don't solo it. Listen to it in the context of the song. 
Um, one of the plugins that I, I recommend and one of the go-tos for me, and it's just a super quick one, is the Chris Lord Algae um, CLA Waves, uh, the vocal one. It's great and it's inexpensive. Um, I definitely pick one of those up. Throw it on the vocal. Well, those presets are great. Just click on a preset already instantly. You have delays, reverbs, uh, compression, um, uh, a little bit of EQ, I think, in there. And, and it's just like already it sounds great. And so a couple of little plugins, like one one like that, and um, and you're ready to go and it sounds really awesome. And then you go ahead and tune. So so that's uh, one thing. To that's number one. You've got to make sure you don't solo it. In, listen to it in context. Number two is... Uh, know the style and genre. A lot of amateurs, they don't know what style they're they're going for. You know, they they might be thinking, okay, let's um, we're going to do a um, a singer songwriter. Um, well, maybe the song is a singer songwriter song, and they they're like uh, treating it like it's a like it's a, a dance track, an EDM or some pop kind of um you know uh, thing that you'd hear in the club or something. You know, and it's like. So you got to know your style and, and you treat them differently. You know, if it's a, um, as an example, uh, if you're doing a singer songwriter and it's maybe stripped down and you want it more, it wants to be a raw singer songwriter song, meaning that you've got an acoustic guitar, maybe you've got a piano and that's it. And then you've got maybe, maybe some strings as they come in later on. And then you've got just the vocalist. And so you want that, you don't want artificial stuff to come in. You don't want that squareness. You don't want to over... Uh, tune it up you want to make sure it's kind of like sounds like it's it was just a great take and um you know so 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 you don't so you got to be you got to be in, you got to be mindful of that as you're as you're working on it. you don't want to be uh over tuning it and and vice versa if it's a, a dance track or maybe it's edm or pop or something yeah you can go to town you can make that real hard you can square it up maybe the verses make it a little bit uh, more, more, uh, you know, not as square and then get to the chorus and you've got maybe stacks, maybe you've got tons of vocals and it's totally okay to just, just square that up. And, and, and another example is what if you're doing jazz, maybe, um, uh, jazz, uh, you know, sometimes they have notes in between. There's a lot of moving parts with the chords and uh, a lot of different things like that. So you can actually have notes in between, um, you know, uh, the, the scale. And so you've got to be able to know that. And then you, you, you got to treat it like that. And, and of course, country, country has a lot of scoops in your vocals. That's like, you know, you'll scoop up to the note. So you'll, you'll slide from one note up to the next one. Um, you know, and those notes in between, you don't want to make them square. Or it's going to sound like pop. Uh, you want to make sure that scoops in there. So you got to know your genre. You got to know what you're what you're doing and, and how that genre, how it's going to fit with that genre. So that's number two. That's a really good one. Um, so uh, number three is um, you, you get stuck. Amateurs will get stuck on that one phrase. They'll be like, oh, I got to fix it up, and they keep listening to that one phrase. Um, I would probably say any more than like five times you've listened to that one part and you try to try to, you know, tweak it. Maybe it's five, seven, somewhere around there where, you know, you try to tweak it and you just do your best, but then you've got to keep moving on because what happens is you end up getting stuck on that one little phrase and you're losing the whole context of the maybe the whole verse or how does that fit in the chorus and and maybe you maybe um melodyne didn't pick it up correct maybe the vocalist didn't even nail it and 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 but then if you don't listen to it in more context if you just dial in that one thing maybe you could if it doesn't tune up and you can't get the vocalist to come in and do it again or if you don't have another take maybe maybe it's something you don't even need or maybe you could find another take and so you don't even have to spend all that time trying to fix up something that could just be replaced and so so you got to make sure that you know you um you don't just get stuck on that thing. And the other thing that what happens is your ears, your ears are very sensitive. They're they're always they, it's very easy for them to get tired. You know, the more you focus on something and the more you keep listening to it and you keep it, it kind of gets louder and louder. And so if you're listening to a mistake or something that uh, you know you're trying to fix, the more and more and more you listen to it, the more you move things around and and you adjust it, uh, it just gets louder and louder. And then you just so you just got to know when you just keep moving on, you can always come back to it. So that's what I do a lot. I'll um I'll keep trying to tune something, you know, four, five, six, seven times or whatever that is, and then I'm like, all right, I'm I'm kind of not hearing it. Uh, it's, it's out of context. So then I'll just move on, and then I say to myself, uh, I'll I'll just keep moving on, and then I'll, on my second pass or when I go back again through the tuning, if it jumps out at me again, I'll try and tune a little bit, and if I if I can't tune that, 
I would just find a replacement and um, that's why you always got to make sure you've got takes, extra takes. Now, if you don't have a take, then you, a whole different process. If, if you I mean, if you've only got one take uh, and that's it, you know, maybe um, for whatever reason, you know, that you can't get the singer in or they're not around or whatever. Um, you know, you've got that one take, then you have to dial it. You, you have to just just keep tweaking it, keep tweaking it and keep working it, you know, but keep, come back to it, you know, come back to that section, get, keep going. So that's one thing, you know, don't just get hung up on that one phrase. So number four is they try to fix everything, meaning that they didn't get a good vocal take. They, um, they didn't like um, uh, nail it at the beginning. They didn't do extra takes just in case they uh they wanted that was it they they think in their mindset they're like okay well uh i'll just i'll just uh fix it all in the mix or fix it uh in the tuning you know fix it in the mastering those those sayings are very very bad don't don't get in a habit of trying to do that get it right at the beginning get your best performance you possibly can at the beginning so what that means for vocalists is you know i i i always recommend um you know, uh, depending on the level, you've got to have at least three. If you can have three vocal, three vocal takes, three good vocal takes, then you can comp one. Uh, and what comping means is um, finding the good parts of the. You know, um, you know, maybe maybe the verse has three lines, and the second, the first two lines were great. Keep them, but the third line you made a couple of mistakes um, or forgot the words or whatever. So you use one of the other takes just on that third line. So comping is you pick all the good ones and you put it in that one take, and that makes the final final cut. You know, so um, and and that's what everyone does. Like you hear when you hear a performer, that's why when you hear a performer live, there's a couple of little pitchy notes. That's normal. That's normal. But the majority of it is great. You know, and so. Um, so that's what happens, you know, on the records, you don't hear those uh, pitchy notes because they've gone back and they've comped it. And so, uh, or the engineer or producer has. So, so, um, so yeah, going back to the, um, uh, you know, um, so going back, don't try and fix everything. If it's you, that, and that goes back to the point three, where if you, if you kind of like, don't get hung up on that phrase and you say to yourself, if it's not kind of working, if not sort of flowing right now, and I can't quite get that going, I'll just keep going. And if worst case scenario is I have three more takes that I can go back and um, I use one of those other takes and, and re melodyne it and maybe, because sometimes melodyne actually does pick it up, all the, all the tuning software, sometimes they pick it up a little different or they they um, they don't, they can't pick up some of the vibrato or maybe you slide up to a note, uh, and maybe that little, uh, the little part, it doesn't pick it up and it just goes straight and it thinks that you're singing one note or maybe it does pick it up or does something funny to it. And sometimes it, it's, it's just, the algorithm just, it's just still a computer. So it doesn't, it's not human. It's not hearing exactly. So it just picks it up a bit different. You got to know how to kind of, you got to know the short, you got to know those keys and, and uh, some of the uh, tools in Melodyne as well. So, but um, which, which, is because um you know i remember i bought a program called omnisphere and if you know if you if you've bought omnisphere or um if you have it it's like a synth kind of it's got tons of sounds like hundreds maybe thousands like maybe tens of thousands of sounds i know there's so many combinations of tweaks and stuff it's it's a very big like um kind of a, a synth kind of sound so it's actually a, it's a plugin. So if you're wondering, uh, it's not an actual Sith you play. It's a, a plugin you put on in in your in your DAW. You put it in, and uh, you can just change all the sounds. There's so many sounds, and then once you find a sound that you like, then you can manipulate and change it, and then you can add stacks of sounds on top of that. So there's just so many elements, and you have all these envelopes and things, which you know I'm not going to go into that, but basically it's. It's a very, very, um, very intense kind of, not intense, but because you can just get easy sound going, but there's so much that you can do. There's just so much. And I did a course on it. I actually went and paid uh, and did these, um, did a few courses and just spent hours sitting there and, and, you know, just watching what they were doing and then tweaking and doing my stuff and then pausing the video, going over and, um, you know, going back to my video, going back to my uh 
my session and I'm doing the same buttons and clicking on the same things and doing the same. I had to learn because there's so much you can do in there. And now when I open up Melodyne, you know, sorry, when I open up Omnisphere, I can put on a sound, uh, go to a preset and then play a, play a chord and then go ahead and tweak that preset like and so it doesn't sound like anything that's um you know anything that 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 was a preset anymore it doesn't sound like no one has that sound there's just too i went in such a different direction to what i wanted uh you know i went in a different direction to, to um what was on the preset and i got what i wanted and that's the sound and and so the same thing with maladon you need to find out you need to understand all these tools there's there are so many shortcuts and um so but um so i want to let you guys know too that uh you know with those shortcuts i'm offering a course and i've just released it it's got like um uh there's like over six lessons um gosh over eight hours and i'm constantly updating to it all the time but i'm actually going to walk you through all the shortcuts that i've been doing all the um uh you know all the tools that i use and i and i show you the speed that you can work once you learn some of those shortcuts it's amazing because um because your fingers like your one hand's on the mouse and one hand's just clicking on the shortcuts and that's the cool thing that you can just be flying and what using it as a tool to what get it tuned up you're not you're not there to it to just you know play around you know you're you're there to tune up the vocal for the song so you can release the song and so so I'm going to show you all the shortcuts, all the tools that I use, uh, the secrets that the pros use too. You know, as I said before, I've done, I've been done, I've done hundreds and hundreds of songs, and uh, you know, I've, I've played around on, on Melodyne and I've had my fun, and now it's just a tool. I got, I got to get to the song. I got to, I don't want to be stuck around trying to find out what, how do I click here? What's the best button I push here? And what's this? I'm showing you in these, in this course, everything that you need to know and everything that you will use on a on a daily basis when you're recording a vocal and when you need that tool you know exactly where it is and even better you know where the shortcut is so so um i know this has been helpful to you guys so um so if you can do me a big favor and um and click the like button below what you'll find is youtube loves uh loves it when you like the videos because the algorithms are like oh, okay we'll put that one to the top and then and then obviously this video can help a lot more other people and so um, so that would be awesome. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit subscribe. Um, and then I'm trying to get to my uh, 1,000 uh, thousand subscribers. So um, we're, we're getting there. So we're getting there. So um, And also head over to my uh, website, thesecretstomusicsuccess.com to check out that Melodyne course. But then also if you want to download a free PDF on um on uh you know pop songwriting tips and uh and mixing tips go ahead and uh just just hit on the the free pdf download and they'll go straight to your um, inbox and um and then you'll have uh some free stuff why not it's free hey so awesome guys we'll have a great day and uh, enjoy your music and enjoy uh working on melodyne